You're listening to the Sex, Drugs, and Jesus podcast, where we discuss whatever the fuck we want to. And yes, we can put sex and drugs and Jesus all in the same bed and still be all right at the end of the day. My name is Devannon, and I'll be interviewing guests from every corner of this world as we dig into topics that are too risque for the morning show as we strive to help you understand what's really going on in your life. There is nothing off the table, and we've got a lot to talk about, so let's dive right into this episode. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sex, Drugs, and Jesus podcast. This week, I'm talking with Sean Jacobson, and she's the host of the Tough Titties podcast. Yes, I said Tough Titties podcast. Now, her show takes a comedic approach to podcasting, and she also gets very raw with her subject matter and everything that she likes to talk about. She covers sex, dating, relationships, friendships, mental health, and all the good shit in between. Now, in this episode, we're going to be covering some of the warning signs of abuse. We're going to be talking about breakups. And in case you don't know what a fuckboy is, we're going to break that down for you as well. And Sean's got a special message to the world about vaginas. And hey, if you never had an orgy before, then you can live vicariously through this episode. Sean in the house, y'all. Welcome to the Sex, Drugs, and Jesus <laughs> podcast. And we we going to be preaching to y'all today about sex. How are you? Am I allowed to be here? I'm Jewish. <laughs> I won't tell no one. <laughs> okay. Well, Jesus was a Jew anyway, so it's okay. Hey, you know what? God created sex. We didn't we didn't create dicks. We didn't create pussies. We didn't create assholes or mouths or ears or eyes or navels or any other holes that we use. That was all his idea. And the clit, he made the clit, which is literally purely made for pleasure. So I just need to let that out there. <laughs> There's all kinds of interesting things in the vagina. What would you like the world to know about the vagina? I was going to ask you that later, but since you... Oh. <laughs> I would like, I would like the world to know. Well, okay. This is more like the, the men world, the male world that likes women. Look at a diagram and figure out where the clit is because you guys are out here rubbing like the left lip and we're just like crickets. But we're just like, yeah, that's great. Like figure out where it is, please, for the love of God, or ask, I guess. It's better than just, you know, guessing because you guys are horrible guessers and you're just not good at it. You're just not good at it. Also, another thing I want to say is to the also the men i just am gonna be mean to the men we don't really like the vaginas in the world majority of us don't really like the like jack rabbit so like get a better stroke game okay that's it when she says jack rabbit she is <laughs> talking about jack hammer fast porn star fucking yeah yeah <laughs> It's Do you like that? Giving it or receiving it? Either. Both. It depends on the situation, my dear. It's, it's, uh, it's like this one drag queen performance song that they do. And they and I can't think of the song that they remade, but the drag queen will be lip syncing and the song will go like, it's true sometimes. You know, a woman needs to be made a love to. That's true. And sometimes she just needs to get fucked. And it's up to you. <laughs> <the difference. laughs> so, for me, like me and my significant other, usually it's pretty fast. You know, I'm a wild bitch and I really, really like it rough. But sometimes I like to slow it down for variety and to also to make him to like reverse control him in a way, even though he usually has his dick in me. So then what I'll do while he's like, did it all fast. I'll tell him to stop while he's still in me. And then I won't let him move at all for a while. And then I'll tell him the cadence and the pace. And then I'll eventually allow him to speed it back up again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think for women, when they're, 
when the guy is going really fast, like jackhammering, it doesn't get into the G spot, if that makes sense. Like when you're like slow stroking, but going deep, then I think that's when you really get the pleasure, if that makes sense. Right, because the G spot is kind of like, from what I've understood, it's like if you were to stick like a finger in there and do like the come here thing. Yeah. But it's kind of like in the middle of the vagina canal. So a dick is going to reach way past that. <laughs> so, and so yeah, so a different technique. If you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever hooked up with a girl? Yeah, I'm not a gold star gay. Oh, no. No, a gold star gay is a gay who's only ever had sex with men, probably only ever will have sex with men. And no, I've had sex with both. But who do you like better? I mean, because I like the the domination. And then I like cum a lot. I'm a cum whore. And so women don't have <laughs> sort of cum coming out of a long stick, which can be inserted into my asshole, mouth, ear, or whatever the case may be that day. And so. Yeah. But I mean, I'm scared of ass sex. I haven't made it there yet. I believe in you. This is your year. This <laughs> no 2022. <laughs> Give me a few months to prepare. That's gonna be your year for anal. <laughs> Maybe I have to find somebody though that I actually like. Like I'm not gonna let some random hookup put anything up my butthole. I don't trust them. And guys, straight guys are really fucking stupid. Like, they just shove it in. And I'm like, I feel like there's a lot we're missing here. We need to, like, prep the area. We need to use lube, maybe, as maybe means definitely we need to use lube. Go slow. Like, I don't know. I've just heard so many horror stories from people or girls that have tried anal, and their guy just really didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Maybe I need to have sex, anal sex, with a bi man. That could what do you think about that? Yeah, bisexual men are great. They're wonderful. I recommend them. Or you could just send them to my house for some remedial lessons before they come over to you. Or I, I actually read that they are like the best lovers. Probably for us, but you know, it always depends on what you're looking for. Okay. <laughs> so... So I'm curious. So your your podcast is called Tough Titties, a Tough Titties podcast, which is what we're highlighting today. Uh, and the logo is very interesting. You got different cup sizes of titties with very yeah. We got lots of boobies. Right. It's nice <laughs> nipples and everything like that. I already showed you mine because uh, I'm a lady. <laughs> um, very classy. <laughs> it's true though. <laughs> so. What I want to know is why the name Tough Titties? Mm -hmm. And I guess the logo speaks for itself, unless there may be something I'm missing. No, there's no hidden message there. I just wanted a bunch of tits on my art. So the name, I was trying to come up with a good name for a while. And it kind of just came to me because my mom used to say Tough Titties to me when I was a kid. Like I'd be a brat or something and she'd be like, well, you don't get everything you want. Tough titties type of thing. And then obviously, you know, when you're little, you hear that, but you don't really know what titties are, you know? So I was in kindergarten and I said it to another classmate in class. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what that person was doing, but I said like, well, tough titties and my kindergarten teacher had an aneurysm and, <laughs> and I got in trouble for that. And then I've kind of just really loved the phrase ever since then. And I just think it's just a good, it's just good. I don't know. It's no deep meaning. I just like it. <laughs> you rebel rouser, you. Mm, yeah. So what is the. The goal of your podcast, who is your target audience? The goal of my podcast is just to have, you know, an open and honest conversation about sex, dating relationships, you know, sprinkle in some mental health and psychology because those things contribute to 
a lot of our behavior in interpersonal relationships and in sex. So I think it's important to touch on those things too. And so my target audience, you know, I don't care. Anybody can listen. (laughs) I would like everyone to listen because I think I talk about a lot of stuff that could be helpful for anybody, but the majority of my audience is 23 to 27, like 50% is in that age range and 60%, 65 to 70% is female, 30% male, which I would like more more men to listen because they're the ones that really need to learn. I would just like more men in general, honey. Me too, because I got slim pickings here. I don't like anybody. In Florida? Oh, God. Yeah. Cuban boys come up there. And I mean, everyone's so beautiful and delicious looking. You think? Well, what part of Florida are you in exactly? I'm in South Florida. Well, it depends on what you have a flavor for, so. My thing is just like, there's such trash. <laughs> I mean, some of them are cute, but like. They're, they just don't know how to treat a lady. Me. So, yeah, it's the dating scene down here has not been my friend. Well, I invite you to Los Angeles, which is my favorite city. I'll move back there one day and you can just... I, I want to go there very badly. Yeah. Beautiful people. We'll be there for Halloween for almost like... Like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, money for, oh shit, damn near a week. <laughs> yeah, so. What are you dressing up as? I'm Gengar this year. Pokemon. Pokemoning it. Gengar the Pokemon. <laughs> the Pokemon, I believe he is. He's this big okay. Pokemon. He just kind of like fits. <laughs> I thought you were going to be something sexy. No, that was last year. I was Fred Flintstone with no underwear underneath his robe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He basically wears a hoochie dress anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about you? I don't think I did anything for Halloween last year. And then this year, I have not thought about it at all. I'm not a big fan of Halloween. I like the can the sale candy on November 1st. <laughs> That's it. I don't like being scared. I don't trust people. I feel like on Halloween, people go fucking crazy and like shit goes down on Halloween because they think it's like the purge low key. And I, I don't fuck with that. I don't fuck with people that wear masks like the medical masks. That's fine. I don't care about that. I'm talking about like the purge masks are scary. Any mask that you get at like spirit Halloween, I can't. I just let me stay in my house and I'll eat the candy that I'm supposed to give to children. Fair enough, bitch. (laughs) And so speaking of mental health issues, like you did, I did want to touch on that. On one of the shows you were talking about, I want to get your thoughts again on you. You were talking about the warning signs of abuse, which you had got from safehorizon.org. Yeah. And I know Uh, that you have your own history of mental health issues too. So I was curious, any of your history have to do with some sort of abuse? No, thankfully, no. Yeah, I did that little disclaimer just because, you know, the Gabby Petito case has gotten really big and it kind of gave me the opportunity to touch on it. I like to have serious conversations on my show, but a lot of the time, It is like funny, you know, and I thought, you know, if anybody who listens to my show needed to hear that, that I should put that out there. So, yeah, for me, no, I have never dealt with any abuse like that. But my sister was with this guy for like 10 years who was physically, emotionally, mentally violent. And she finally like left him last year during COVID because he was home way too much. And she's like, okay, yeah, like I can't even put up with this anymore. And that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. So she's been out of there for like a year or so. So 
for me, no, but I, I have a sister who went through that. So yeah, I think it is important because I think it's a lot more prevalent than we think, you know? And some of the warning signs from safehorizon.org, and I'll put that in the show notes for sure. Well, the one that stood out for me was when they try to isolate the person being abused from friends and family. Yeah. So they have no support system besides the abuser. And that was how my hu- my husband, my sister's husband was. He did not like when she visited me and, you know, my mom and my other sister. He did not like her doing anything without him, but he was not allowed at my house. So, you know, that caused a lot of a lot of stuff. He was just very controlling. And it's just, I I think, you know, all these abusers start out small because if they started out the way that they end up, nobody would be with them. So they start out small. So I think that it's kind of important just to recognize the small signs before they get too big and you know when to leave. Right. And and safehorizon.org has those warning signs and it was important to you because you've experienced it because from listening to your podcast it's like you were saying it can be hard to tell if a loved one is in an abusive relationship unless you know the signs to look for right so like it took you a while to realize what was going on with your sister i knew i didn't like him from the beginning keep in mind my sister is 10 years older than i am so she was with him when I was younger and I didn't really know what this kind of stuff was so she did talk to my mom a lot about it and you know my mom would always tell her you know like you should leave him but it's never that easy and so yeah when I first met him I was like I don't know I don't like him but I don't know maybe I was just feeling like he was like taking my sister away type of thing but as I got older I started hearing more of the things that he was doing and so I think I didn't I didn't really see it I just heard about it because I didn't get to see her that often because of him but now that I know the signs and I'm like he literally checks off every single one Mm mm-hmm you know, well, I'm glad she made it out. In because not, yeah. So then, what what are some of your personal mental health struggles that you have dealt with or are dealing with? Yeah. So I think that I've had depression probably since I was nine years old, but I wasn't really sure what it was. You know, because I was like so young, and most nine year old kids, at least when I was nine years old did not struggle with that or at least I didn't think so I just thought I was different and so when I was nine that was like the triggering point was that my dad passed away like unexpectedly so that kind of triggered that and I went to therapy but I was nine so I didn't really know I didn't really know what I was supposed to be doing there you know what I mean? Like I couldn't process what therapy was. I didn't want to be there. I was like, just random man is trying to talk to me about shit I don't want to talk about. So after a little bit of that, I stopped doing it. I should have went back when I was in high school when I started liking boys Mm -hmm. because that's my downfall. And then in college, I think I was probably severely depressed like 75 percent of my time there and my I got a boyfriend and that brought me out of it but I was like so dependent on him for like all of my happiness he was like my whole life I did not have a life outside of him which I think is kind of it kind of happens to a lot of people in their first relationships I think I've seen it in in some of my friends first relationships like when we were younger it's just like that puppy love you know Mm -hmm. you don't want to you don't want to be away from that person and so 
I was so happy with him whenever I was with him. So we spent literally every second together pretty much. And so when we broke up, I literally had a mental breakdown, like severely unwell. And so that kind of is what triggered me to be like, okay, I need help. This is not a normal response to a breakup. Obviously, regular breakup, you, you're sad, but you can like still live your life. Like I could not live like it was horrible. And so that's when I got back into therapy. And that's kind of what made me start thinking about and start talking about my relationship to men and to sex because I think it all kind of stems down to losing my dad at a young age which is kind of fucked up I am sorry that that happened to you thank you but I am glad that you seem to be aware that there is a problem that you are yes down from it and I think that that's where it begins no, healing isn't going to come until it's meant to, you know, I think, I think our task yeah. as humans is to recognize our weaknesses and the issues, establish a plan and to, and to work with it and to be incredibly patient with ourselves as we stumble and fall along the way. I mean, but God, you know, I could see that, you know, not having that masculine foundation. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is kind of where the psychology and mental health stuff comes in on my podcast is, you know, a lot of the shit that we struggle with has to, like, it, it comes from our childhood, whatever we experience. I talk about attachment theory. I don't know if you're familiar with what your attachment is, but mine is anxious. So that comes in the form of being clingy as fuck, being needy as fuck, and like scared of abandonment. And so if you're not securely attached, and some people think they are, but they're not. If you're not securely attached, it you have your own struggles that you face in all of your relationships, not just romantic. So... I think it's very important that we kind of, we got to sadly get, go back into our childhood and figure out where we were fucked up by our parents. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, True. I've been doing so, so much of that. You know, my own, this, this, this show here that I have has been very healing right in my, throat. I feel the same way too. Very healing. It's like cathartic, right? And I didn't expect that, you know, I, I started this podcast to compliment my memoir that's coming out, but it in the process, I'm like, just talking to people has just helped me to get past some shit, which is why I love having people like you on because who are willing to be transparent mm -hmm. because it helps people. I probably say this on every fucking show, but I, yeah, like it's just something healing about being transparent. Whenever somebody hears about a similar struggle, it gives them the strength to go on a little bit further. Not mm -hmm. advice, not even needing advice, just knowing that somebody else is out there suffering the same way is so helpful to people. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have struggled in the way that both of us have, but not a lot of people are vocal about it so someone's got to be and those someone's are us <laughs> oh someone's are us with a capital r mm -hmm. so okay cool so let's switch gears and get into the more fuckery what yeah. <laughs> okay what i'm yeah. excited so and i was trying to to see the name of that particular show that's what i've been giving out trying to what it, which one the one with dog it was something like something in or oh oh my uh yeah what is the first word that's something not threesomes and orgies oh my sex tapes sex tapes sex tapes right yeah sex tapes orgies and threesomes oh my and i listened to several <laughs> of the episodes, but that one stood out to me the most that guy has yeah because you have a crush on him that's why i have a crush <laughs> on him but I have to play hard to get because I already heard his secrets. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, when him totally not interested. 
<laughs> gonna see if he wants to come on the show for you. Yeah. You want me to text him right now? <laughs> All right, do it. I love the fucking with like straight guys and stuff like that. Not necessarily trying to turn them straight, but I like to see how much of my feminine energy they can handle without getting offended. I feel like he would probably like flirt back with you. <laughs> I think it's just American guys. They're like almost, I don't know. They're just like so hyper masculine. Like they, they can't even like play around with it. You know what I mean? Or just toxically, just, just fucking bored with it. <laughs> I'm saying I have a pos podcast opportunity for you. <laughs> That's a good way to say it. Mm -hmm. So in there, you and Sexy Man there were talking about. <laughs> sexy Man. A couple mm -hmm. of things here, like uh, you you described him as a fuck boy. He didn't want to be called a fuck boy. He is. He felt like that it was a negative term. So <laughs> I wanted to get to some terminology here. So there's a fuck boy. Okay. I want to get your take on what a fuck a boy is, and then we're going to talk about trade, which is a, a more of a term in the gay world, but they're kind of the same. What is it? A trade? Trade. I've never heard that. Okay, so fuck boy, I feel like a fuck boy is a guy who will literally do anything to get in your pants. If that includes making you feel like he likes you, he will do that. He will lie up and down just to get in your pants. He'll make you feel like you're special just to get in your pants. And I think there's no problem with casual sex, okay? But I think the problem is when people aren't honest about what they want. And then that's when people's feelings get hurt. And I don't like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Is that what a trade is for you? Trade, is, that is a good definition of a fuck boy. And I would just add to that a fuck boy is somebody who has basically fucked everyone in town. It's like a guy version of what some would consider to be a whore or a promiscuous woman. But there's nothing wrong with being a whore. There's something wrong with being a fuck boy. I okay. think it's the lying. Yes, yeah, the lying, not the amount of sex. Right. Okay. Yeah. I can with you on that for sure. And a trade is the same way. So trade in the gay world will be a very masculine guy, usually in very fucking good shape. We'll have a girlfriend on the side, but then he's going to come around and fuck the dudes on the other side of town, but she don't know. Oh, that's bad. Wolf. <laughs> trade it. So some people may call him an undercover brother. Or whatever the case may be, trade will be fucking trannies and real girls, real fish and men all at the same time. And then, but ne not necessarily everyone knows what's happening. He's at the center. He's the nucleus of this fuck world that he's created. Wow. It, wow. So, so that's what you call a piece of trade. This is Urban Dictionary. If you don't trust me, I'm going to put Urban Dictionary in the show. I trust you. I have a feeling that you wouldn't lie to me about that. Oh, no, no, I'm not talking to you, honey. I'm talking to the audience. That's oh, the audience. I'm talking to the audience. So I'm going to put Urban Dictionary in the uh, show notes. If somebody out there probably hasn't heard of Urban Dictionary, it can really help you understand a lot of shit in this world. Buy Urban Dictionary at least once a day. Yeah. Fuck I you. never know what the fuck people are talking about. Right? <laughs> Instead of, like, what is a WAP? I need to know it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, I think the most recent thing I looked up was a sneaky link. I'm like, what the actual fuck is that? I've never heard that. But I think that's, like, the generation under me uses that. What it's is just, like, a hookup. A dick or what? It's just, like, someone you hook up with, I think. Okay. <laughs> That's a very covert way of texting your parents. Their parents won't know what the fuck they're talking about. I guess. So, so speaking of terms from Urban Dictionary, I looked up pig roasting earlier, which is something that Sexy Man did when he was like 19 or something like that. And so, dude, would you care, Sean, to tell the audience was pig roasting as we're talking about orgies now? Okay, I think it's spit roasting. A spit roast. 
I think right? that's changeable terms. But tell me what okay. the ending is of it. Okay, I think it's kind of like an Eiffel Tower situation where it, why are you smiling so big <laughs> i think it's like two guys and then a girl in the middle she is on all fours mm-hmm. maybe that's eiffel tower and maybe spit roasted she's on her back i don't know the technicalities i haven't done it but one penis is in her vagina the other penis is in her mouth and then they just rotate her around like a rotisserie chicken <laughs> right and that's why it's called pig roast because if you ever like in hawaii or you see that they stick the the steak or the rotisserie chicken all the way through the ass and the mouth so it's like if you have a dick in your mouth and a dick in your ass then you're in the middle that it could be a rotisserie chicken or a pig roast thing on the mother yep the whole thing she's been skewered basically so it it is an Eiffel Tower then. Yeah, it could be called that. I think the Eiffel Tower is like the guy's hold hand, so it's like a triangle. <laughs> oh yeah, in order to yeah, I don't get <laughs> the balance, the balance, the force. Yeah, I that's a dream though. I'd love to do that. Oh my god! In my dream threesome, I want two guys because I will not be sharing any attention with another bitch. I'll tell you that. Yeah, you pointed that out because cause in your show, you were talking about how they had like a whole five way going on. It was two guys. And yes. The, and the one girl they thought was ugly and the other three they thought was They dropped her. And she <laughs> left gracefully and you were like, okay, that would not be me. I would not bow out gracefully. <laughs> no, are you kidding? Like that is just so mean. They kind of just started leaving her out. And I'm like, if that were to ever happen to me, I would lose my mind. That's why I can't be put in those situations. You've never had. Oh, wait, Dom just texted me. He said, what about I might be interested? <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, we'll, we'll, we will, we will deal with him after the show. Okay. 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 <laughs> like a picture of my tits, which I flashed you before we came on the air and that'll seal the <laughs> So you've never had an orgy before? No. I know. Shocking. I know. I sound like such a whore. <laughs> a scandalo. I know. I have not having orgies. I don't know. Where am I supposed to find these said orgies? Well, you can go on app and look for them. Or if you have ever have a significant other, you can look for them together, either out or on an app. Or, I mean, you're a girl. You, you can just go to any fucking club and just look hot and find two guys or show it up together. And there you go. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just feel like it's hard to, I feel like you have to really coordinate a two guy threesome. Well, any kind of threesome or two or three plus is going to take some coordination because you have different agendas, different energies, different everything. Yeah. Well, you know, like y'all were discussing on your show, you know, the guys are concerned about the other dick sizes of everyone else. (laughs) Like, yeah. Like, like, like my new boyfriend said, uh, he would prefer that if he's in a group situation that all the, all the other guys there have a similar dick size to him, not, not too much smaller, not too much bigger. That way there's no like intimidation because he was like, you know, women, you know, their subjectiveness to what classifies a sexy woman, but either you have a 12 inch dick or you have a six inch dick or a nine inch one or a 14 inch one. They're the clear winner. And so, so they, so they would rather similar dick sizes. Yeah. Personally, I don't give a fuck about dick size. I'm happy with average, to be honest with you. So there's, there's a point where it's too much for you. Yeah. I have had sex. This is like my sophomore year in college, but I had sex with this guy who went to my school but he was from spain and he kept saying ow and i'm like why are you saying ow i'm fine (laughs) and he was like it feels like something is crushing the tip of my dick and then i was like okay like let's just stop like i'm not trying to hurt you and then i started researching it and i think it was getting like caught in my cervix or something I don't know. So average is good for me. 
<laughs> and yeah, I have a tight punani, so. I think that that. I prefer. I would hope he wasn't like all up in your guts, literally. I don't know. I felt fine, but he was saying ow. And I was like, I've never had a guy say ow from sex, from like putting his penis in me. The user are like, wow, that's great. Was he like super long? Yeah. How many inches? I don't know. Get honey. <laughs> I think he said that he was like nine. Oh, right. I feel like you're like, mm. <laughs> What, you want a whole foot long in your asshole? The longest I have had was about maybe 15 or 16. I don't who is walking around slinging that dong? <laughs> you got them out there, honey. I have had... I have, what do you even do with that? Whatever you can. <laughs> I'm like, give me a nice seven inches and I'll live my life happily. It, I mean, I, the first time I had a date that long, he was on like a 19 year old and I went over to his mom's house and picked him up, but she greeted me in the driveway. That is bizarre. I, damn. I, I'm a cougar anyway. I'm like 38. My boyfriend is 24. I love him young, bitch. And so it, it is what it is. And so. <laughs> like I'm older. And so, hey, touche. And so. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he was, I think, like in the 14, 15 inch range. And he was one of these profiles on an app. That almost looks fake because you're like, can this dick really be this long? Bitch, it really, really was. And I feel like Hold on. What what race was this man? He was black. <laughs> Have you ever seen a white man with that big of a dick? Yes. When I was a meth dealer in Houston, one of the what? who used to hang out at my trap house. He wanted okay. to me, but I didn't know because he had a wife and kids. And as far as I knew, he was straight. And just one day he popped the dick out on me out of like nowhere. I was bagging up some drugs at the table. And it was okay. the same. And of course, he was one of those white boys kind of like who acts back like, you know, like g -E -Z and shit like that. You know, he had that. He got that <laughs> about him, which I think is very popular right. on white boys. And so there was that. There was a Latino. When I was in Tucson and his shit, he had like imported double XL condoms with magnums were too small for him. <laughs> and, and his shit was way past 12, honey. And what do you, what do you do with a dick that big when you're like not having sex? Do you have to like tape it to your leg? Like, well, they all, I don't understand. No, they all start off as little bitty wormy looking squiggly things. All of them. <laughs> And then they grow a foot long. Grow that fucking big. Like. No. Because. I'm all set. The dicks are made out of like a spongy sort of cellular material. And so it can expand greatly. So you're not always walking around with it down to your knees. And you know. And <laughs> so. That's why we get surprised by it sometimes. This nerds have really big dicks too. They just do. Nerds? Yes. <laughs> Yes, you used to find, find you, on any given day, you'd find me hanging around the Apple store, honey. And there was nothing wrong with my iPhone. But, you know, no little skinny jeans and shit like that. It got some huge monsters. It's, the, it's like the skinny, nerdy boys. They're the schlongs. They do. <laughs> they do, the edge. I'm telling you. Secrets out. Everyone head to the Apple store and get you some dick. I don't even. I just like regular. Do you just, I'm not picky. You got to do. I know of people who have run from monster dicks before. You have to listen to your body, and your body's telling you it doesn't want to get destroyed by that. But I feel sorry for a lot of guys like that because it's difficult for them to come because they can't really go balls deep in most people. They don't get they don't get enough sufficient friction because you barely have a third of the dick in there, and this is well you can go. And so yeah. there's a lot of masturbating. It's a lot of blow jobbing. You know, and stuff like that. And so, mm -hmm. you no, know, but there's a lot to work with. You know, three or four people can all get both their hands on dicks that long. And you can, <laughs> <laughs> like, just have to go for it. It's like a magic beanstalk. It just, yeah, you can climb in, motherfucker. And find, find Jack and Jill. It's a lot, a lot of down there. <laughs> but when it comes to sex, and things like that, you know, from listening to yours, like the guys are talking about how they like to do a good job while they're having sex and everything like that. And 
I feel like the focus should be more on a, a conjugal experience, you know, like the, the, whoever there are all experienced to get it together. You know, I say this to try to release guys from the pressure of feeling like they have to perform a certain way or, you know, and everything like that, you know, like. I, I, I don't think we should look at it like, okay, this is my project here. I need to get this person off. You know, how about, why don't we find a way to get off together? And, you know, and you both help each other. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, what do you, I do. What do you think about that? Here's the thing. Okay, maybe it's an age thing, but I don't think it is because I've hooked up with older guys, like I'm 39, 40, 43. And they don't give a fuck about my orgasm. They just only care about theirs. And they're like, okay, night, night. And then they turn over. And I'm like, I am nowhere even finished here. So, so I think it's hard because like, I get the performance anxiety that guys get, but at the same time, if you took a moment and focused on the woman, because let's be real, I'm, I think only like less than 20% of women will orgasm from penetration. Like we need other stuff. So take a break, relax, and just like play with her puss. I don't know, like do something. Like, women really love foreplay, and I think sometimes men get so excited to fuck, like, actually do the penetration that, like, they they skip over that really fast. And I think, in my opinion, foreplay is better than the actual penetration. Like, it's I think it's more fun. I think it feels better, and I'm more likely to come from that. So I think if men focus more on the feeling and the feelings that they're giving to the woman rather than performance I think maybe that would help but I don't really feel bad for them (laughs) well you bad well I mean if that's the experiences that you had then I can I can I can imagine I could imagine but you know one day John you're gonna find a guy who who treats you exactly the way you want to be treated. I just I know. Wouldn't that be nice? So what kind of foreplay do you like? What do you like have done to you? Let's tell the world right now. Oh God. Okay. I love a good make out sesh. Like I just really love making out, but also if you're not good at kissing, the sex is probably gonna be bad. Do you agree? I don't let things be bad. Like if I'm going to get 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 down to business with somebody, it will be good. And I'm just, just decided. So if they suck at kissing. Now I'm going to teach them how. <laughs> Period. Like, how do you do that? How do you teach somebody to kiss? Make them stop and be like, you're doing it wrong. Let me show <laughs> you. And even though, because I'm usually the submissive in sexual encounters. Mm-hmm. Been, and I've had married men who have been married to women, bi men, gay men, all kinds of men. Like they, and you know, they, once they get turned on and everything like that, it doesn't matter how they're getting touched. They just glad, they're just glad that they are. It's really just that simple. It's kind of like, you know, right? It's that men are not super complicated, actually. I know they're so you guys are so simple but women just can't believe that they're so simple so we're like okay we ha- let's figure out what's really going on here but they're really just simple this <laughs> thing if you're going to agree to kiss them and you don't like it then you stop and you show them how to do it right there's no sense in going through an experience that you don't like there's something you can do about it pause it let's have some conversation won't take long, but I don't necessarily equate bad kissing to bad dick because people have all kinds of emotional connotations with kissing. Some people feel like that's a super close thing to do with sticking a dick in somebody. It's not an emotional attachment at all. Doesn't make any fucking. Yeah. 
but you know, whatever you believe in your head is the way that you're going to go out there and approach society. So maybe they're not kissing well because they haven't decided to give you their heart yet. And maybe they just want to kiss because you wanted to kiss, but they really aren't fully committed to it because they're not in love with you. I think they need to be in love with you to do the kiss. It's all kinds of shit that goes through people's head over kissing. And so that's just too much. It is too much going on. I'm like, we in this bed, we fuck it. We might as well kiss and do every damn thing else. It'd be done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I so yeah, I love a good make out sesh, like starting out like slow, cute, and then it gets like nasty, you know, then I love like boob and nipple stuff. Mm. So maybe I should get my nipples pierced, but I'm scared. I'm not trying to like have my tea towels out in front of like the whole tattoo shop. <laughs> and then they have to flick your nipples. I'm like, I don't want a, this random man in a store flicking oh, my nipple. So hot of that turned into a spec session. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like that's more like porn. I don't know if that would happen in real life. No, see what for you maybe. <laughs> You're like, I would make it happen. Yeah, so some boob stuff, whatever. I've really have started to love a good fingering. Because I had someone, this is really hot, and I think people should do this more. And he was older, so I think that's why he did it. He was, he started fingering me, and then he was like, hold on one second. And he turned to his like nightstand and just brought out some lube, squirted it on his hand, squirted it on me, and just like went to town. It felt so good. And guys my age would literally never do that, they're scared of lube. And I was like, do you not understand how hot that is? Hot. So like the straight boys in their 20s, get some lube and put it in your nightstand. Yeah, love that. Love when they go down on me. But also like if you're not good at that, then I'd rather you just finger me, you know? Because sometimes for me, like if it's not, if I don't feel enough like pressure or something it literally feels like rain i'm like okay let's just get back up here <laughs> well you know you got to talk to people sex is all about communication even if it is a random hookup or one time thing you know you got to tell yeah how to do you the right way that you're going to be different than the previous girl he was with versus the next girl so i don't hold that against them i understand this this boy needs some instruction in some direction. Yes. Channel the inner cougar in you, bitch, and teach these men that shit. That is hot in and of itself when a woman tells a man what to do. Yeah, yeah I think I think it, it's coming with age. It's coming with age. When I was younger, I would never say anything because I was like scared to hurt the boy's feelings. And I still kind of feel that way, especially because I do date and hook up with guys older than me, like 10 plus years. So it's a weird little like power dynamic that I feel like I shouldn't say anything or like build up the courage to say something, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I just need a little more time. <laughs> at a time, at least you know the direction you need to be headed in. Yes. This is how people out there, you know, we get to a point where we're happy with everything that we do, especially when it comes to an interaction with somebody else. If there's something that we don't like, change it and tell them. Yep. Now, end it if they're unwilling to adjust, but... You'd be surprised how open and receptive people would be to, to, to talking through it. Yeah. And guys has got to get past the uh, being intimidated if she wants a toy in the room, you know, or something. Oh yeah. I don't understand that at all. Because, but... you know, men are being taught by men who are also fractured and broken and had all kinds, or they're just being taught by porn and not by anything else. And then. Yeah. Um, so they're approaching you with a whole head full of bullshit, but they don't know it's bullshit. They're just thinking, okay, I'm supposed to do this if the guy in the porn did it that way. You know, the education. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he needs to be re-educated. And that's where you come in one day once you're ready to do that and take him to the Yeah. House. 
Yeah, I think I'll, I'll think I'll get there. I think I will get there. But you, what, what was that trick that you had for, for giving head? Talk to us about the way uh, you had a cotton mouth cure. Apparently, if you smoke some weed or whatever the fuck, and you have a dry mouth, you, how, 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 how can we fix that? Okay. My newest favorite thing to do is honey head. You can do this on any genitalia that you want. It works for dick. I don't eat pussy, but I learned this from someone who is bisexual. So she's done it to both. So for men, you get some honey. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't travel with honey. I just assume people have it in their kitchen. (laughs) But yeah, so you just literally put a little like dollop on their dick or just like a little little bit on a clit depending on who you're working with and you just you know suck it how you normally would or lick it how you normally would but the honey stimulates your salivary glands so you make a lot of spit so if you were smoking, if you have cotton mouth, if you're nervous and you don't have that much spit, this is like a really great tip. And it's like whoever you're hooking up with probably has honey in their kitchen anyway. And, you know, when I do this to guys, I've only done it to two so far. But when I bring it up, they're like so excited. They're like, what? What do you need honey for? Okay, I'll go get it. And then they like run to the kitchen ass naked <laughs> looking for honey. And I've gotten like really, really great reviews from this. I think the guy thinks it's like really hot because it's new. Like, I don't think a lot of people have like dropped some honey on their dick before they got head. And so, yeah, I kind of spiced it up. Plus, like, 99.9% of guys like sloppy head. And the honey will help you achieve that because you get a lot more spit. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend does like the honey, too. We haven't done that in a while. Break out the honey, honey. (laughs) You should. It's so fun. And it tastes good. We, I like the Hershey strawberry syrup, which is used in much the same way, but we basically, yeah. basically dribble it all over him. I think the so if you're gonna go down on a girl and you want to use the honey, I think use honey. Like, don't use like Hershey's chocolate syrup because you know vaginas are very sensitive, and at least honey's like natural right (laughs) a little it might still it might still fuck up your ph i don't know but i can guarantee you that chocolate drizzle will definitely do that so you might as well go with the honey if you are a vagina owner so so you said ph the ph balance so do you how do you find out the ph balance of a vagina do you stick like a litmus strip (laughs) no (laughs) i don't know (laughs) i don't know what the pH balance is of a vagina, but I will tell you when your pH in there gets thrown off, and uh, mine is very sensitive for some reason. Like if there's a new toy, a new finger, a new dick, a condom, like anything, anything foreign, she's like, "What the actual fuck is this?" And like I get bacterial vaginosis or yeast infection, and that fucking sucks so yeah no you don't stick a strip up your cooter but you know women if your smell down there changes if it smells fishy it's probably uh, bacterial vaginosis or some form of an sti and then you know if you pull down your pants and you have some cottage cheese up in there probably a yeasty (laughs) So girls know, girls know. We don't know our actual pH balance unless like everyone's sticking strips up their vagina to find that out. But I do not do that. I just know when something's off. 
The girl who taught you about the honey, you said that you have never eaten a vagina. Did she eat yours? No. So you never done any girl on girl action? No. I'm so scared of vagina. I really love men. Okay, strictly dickly. Right now, yes. Right now I'm strictly dickly. Okay. I feel like I feel like I don't know. As people age, they're kinda like, uh, oh, sure, I'll try. But right now I haven't gotten to that point. She the lady that I'm talking about, she was a guest on my show and she's a kink educator. And I asked her what her favorite sex tip was and that was it and i was like okay gotta try this shit and it has rave reviews <laughs> hallelujah on a tuesday uh afternoon favorite positions okay i'm gonna have to be basic and say that i love a doggy i just think it's hot and that's like kind of where they get in the deepest but I also love, I don't know if this has a name, so I'm just going to describe it. <laughs> no. Um, okay. Oh, hell yeah. I'm, I'm laying on the bed. The guy is standing up and my like ass is kind of hanging off the bed. Uh-huh. And then my legs are on their shoulders. Does that have a name? Yeah. I think that might be like the hangman or something like that. Cause cosmopolitan. They used to have, I don't know if they still have it on their app. They used to do the sex position of the day. Uh-huh. So, and they cover every possible fucking thing and they all have a name. But I know yeah. the ass off the side of the bed. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I like that one too because it feels good. Those are my favorite. Honestly, I'm a bitch. I'm a good bitch for missionary. I'm a pillow princess. <laughs> and it, it, also feels good and like you can make out while you're doing it like dog you can't do that sure you can yeah. like if he reaches up and you turn your head you can still kiss while you're doing doggy like i guess <laughs> it's just like that's so much work oh yeah it's that it's definitely that <laughs> they gotta put in that work honey uh, what about public sex have you done that before Okay, I've had sex in a car once, and I was literally so scared. (laughs) So scared. And I I don't know why. Dude, I've never even gone a speeding ticket. So I was like, if I have sex with you and we get in trouble, I'm going to be fucking pissed. So I start, like, hanging up every single item of clothing that I could find and just like sticking it in every inch of the windows because I was so scared. And honestly, I fucking hated it. I do not like car sex. Well, sex. At least you tried. You were open monthly. I tried, but what public sex have you done? I don't, I'm too scared of getting caught. Like, I don't find that hot. I'm like scared. <laughs> well, the first time I was in like a truck, this guy, who I hooked up with a couple of times that I was, and living in Arizona, picked me up. I don't know. I was like 19, you know, just starting on my sexual journey and being a total whore. Um, As we do. Trying to fill the void that my dad left by not being present enough in my life. And so I, I went about the business of finding that in the arms of other men. And I knew it when I was doing it. I was like, I want to, to be embraced by someone more masculine than me. It, yeah, I still do that. It's like sad. Hey, you'll heal one day. You'll heal one day, baby. No, I've been on, I've been on a sex cleanse. I haven't had sex for three months. So that's pretty good. The last time I did a sex ban, I lasted five weeks. (laughs) So there's progress. Anyway, continue. Get get going, girl. Get going. (laughs) No, he, he picked me up in his pickup truck and he intentionally wanted to park in front of some people's houses to make it more erotic. And so we were in this neighborhood and. And then he laid me on my back. And so we did it missionary and stuff like that. And that was totally fine. Another time, I think I was walking around Montrose in Houston in in the gay part of Houston high on probably at least ecstasy and maybe cocaine or G and GHB and GBL is like a liquid substance, a very European drug. And you take it like a cat fool and it makes you feel very euphoric. You don't have like the groggy come down and hang over you don't feel like a zombie when you're done okay. the high is only gonna last 
for a little bit anyway. It's not like a, an all night, several day high, but it's a very like party drug. So you take it, you go to raves and bands, or you can take it and fuck. <laughs> you want to do, you just kind of feel really, really fucking good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like ecstasy kicking in, but it take it long. And you know, and some guy was like walking around as they do. You'll find a lot of trade and a lot of just hot men walking around the gay parts of different cities. And so I was like, I want you to fuck me in this ditch right here. And so he did. <laughs> in a ditch? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a ditch bitch. <laughs> Have you done that more than once? Not that I can recall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you hide pretty much like every day, especially back when I was a drug dealer and, you know, and all of that. So I was high like all the time. And so I, and then other than that, I was always trying to seduce guys to fuck me in different jacuzzis and pools and stuff like that. But you was, well, you probably wouldn't be surprised, but some men are, the men are very adventurous, but some of them are not. Some of them don't want to have public sex, but most guys would want to try some shit like that. So it wasn't just, you know, what was meant from my experiences were not as voyeuristic as I would have liked them to be. Mm -hmm. And so, but you know, now I have enough sense to know about like nudist colony and nudist, you know, there's places where you can go do public sex legally and that's yeah. the risk of getting in trouble. Is that what you want to do? Back then, I didn't know all that. It was so <laughs> yeah, I am not down for getting in trouble. Not, not about that life. <laughs> not for everyone. Orange is not the new black. You know, I've been dressed in the orange jumpsuits and shit before. It's hideous. Fashion is hideous when you're in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and so I take it no drug sex for you. So no what? No drug, drug. No, no. I I haven't even really had like really drunk sex either. Most of my sex is sober. That's a good way to connect and stuff like that. So Blah. that way, you give me the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I heard I heard having sex while high is good. It. It can be, but you have to be careful that you don't let yourself have like, I wouldn't do the first time experience that way because then your bar is going to be set way too high. And then I wouldn't do it often because then you're going to rewrite like your synapses in your brain and the way your sex drive is. And then you'll, you can become, you, you will become codependent on it. If, like you will need it to have sex. Right. So like when I go into like these different, like say crystal meth anonymous groups and meetings and stuff like that, you know, invariably you will hear somebody talking about how they cannot have sober sex anymore. They've had so much sex on meth or in the same thing applies to any kind of drug that intensifies the, your, your sexual nature. You know, mm -hmm. Some things are not meant to be that intense and that shit is so fucking intense. Like, but you can't like, you know, do it every fucking day. You know, if it's a couple of times a year, then God bless you if you have enough self-control to only do addictive drugs a couple of times a year. To answer your question, yeah, it can be, but it's also a double-edged sword. Some people, somebody, some people are just going to experiment with the shit it is. So what I'm saying, mm -hmm. don't go down that road, tell yourself, put it in your subconscious that you are going to control it and not let it control you as far as it get out of hand. Stop. Because these people are like desperately trying to find ways to connect with people because they've had so much drug sex that they cannot, they can't figure out how to have sex without being high. Like they won't get hard. That. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And so it can fuck up your shit, dudes, if you take it to the, to the extreme. You know, but that's with anything. You don't want to overeat. You don't want to be, you don't want to go to church too much, if at all. You want to just, and I say that because churches just generally suck these days. You know, I don't have anything against Jesus. Clearly, I have him in the title of my show, but churches don't have to, you know, it's a whole other thing. They got nothing to do with Jesus half the time. And so, yeah. okay, so then our last thing we're going to talk about, and of course, it's still going to be dicks because it's both of our favorite subjects. You know, I'm mm -hmm. We love to suck on a dick together. 
with you would say technically it would still be two guys strictly it would oh my god should we ask my friend i was thinking about him so i know you were i really <laughs> wanted <laughs> You know, just, you know, who could we find? Oh. <laughs> is he in the States or is he in Italy? No, he's in Florida. Oh. So you're going to have to come here. Oh, that's fine, honey. Fly American Airlines. I'm, I have, I'm always flying somewhere. And so, yeah, I'm going to have to bring a boyfriend. We're, he, me, my boyfriend and I are kind of starting to open things up we've actually made the decision to start doing that we haven't made the jump yet because we're waiting for the right time the right person the right whatever the case. yeah so so yeah let's make it happen and oh so so <laughs> the last thing circumcised or uncircumcised i don't care do you care I don't give two shits, one fuck, or a good goddamn, does it work? Okay. <laughs> I can work with that. I don't care. I, I have experienced both. And I feel like when someone is uncircumcised and they're hard, you don't even notice, really. So it's like, why does everybody make such a big deal? Now, if you are uncircumcised and you don't know how to clean your dick, that is honestly, even if you are circumcised, if you don't know how to clean your dick, like I am not about that. But if you take care of yourself and you have good hygiene, like who gives a fuck? And I actually was thinking about if I were to have a son, would I circumcise him or not? I think it's so, I think it's mean. I don't know. Are you circumcised? Yeah, I'm cut. Yeah, I'm cut. I'm like, it's kind of like, it's kind of fucked up. Well, let's... and. Go ahead. And Okay. And I was going to say that people that are uncircumcised have more pleasure. Like they're more sensitive. So like, what is the reasoning of circumcising that's what i was going to say so this comes from the hebrew tradition from the middle yeah i'm jewish so so you know this is something that god gave to moses to separate them from the people around them just like the other hundreds and hundreds of traditions that they couldn't they like pierce his ear or something <laughs> they had to chop his little wiener skin off hey you know <laughs> everything boils down to the d at the end of the day, it does true everything. And so, and so, but so the reason it happened to me is because I was raised in a Pentecostal, you know, family church and everything, and who and they pull so many things that they do from the Bible, but they don't separate the fact that it's no longer relevant to our culture. It is not our culture, and they try to fit Middle Eastern cultures into ours, which should not be done. And so, strictly speaking. If you're not Jewish and, he, and you don't clean or and you're not clinging to the old traditions, you know, in the old Testament, there is no, there's no health reason to get circumcised. Yeah. Uh, it's strictly a spiritual thing from years and years and years ago, from another land, from another time. And if I had a sign, I would leave his dick just the way God made it apart from, you know, snipping the, you know, whatever the hell you have to, when they're born, but. Other than that, he could decide if you want to get your shit chopped up later on, then that's you. You know, I'm not doing that, you know, to him because there is, yeah. there's no spiritual reason to do it because the Lord says he wants our hearts to be circumcised, not our bodies. You know, he's already disavowed the need for physical circumcision. So why? And, you know, I don't do shit just because my family did it. The people before them know, bitch, why does this make sense to me? So, right. Right. There is no logical reason. And like, a lot of, a lot of European men, like they don't, they don't circumcise much over there. I mean, what the fuck for, you know, it doesn't, there's still the same amount of calm that's going to come out of it. It's going to poke you the same way. I feel sorry for some of them. Some of them sometimes can get like this really sensitive mid sex because the, it is so sensitive, but it never stops them from, from finishing. They're fine. Like, 
they gonna fuck right through the pain. <laughs> but but no, but then, yeah. see in the gay world, there is. Is there like a stigma in the gay world for people that are uncircumcised? No, the stigma is for people who are yeah 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 people who are uncircumcised. Because even when you're on like the gay hookup apps, they ask you if you're cut or uncut. Some people will not talk to you if you are uncut. Some people are just so turned off by it. You know, porn has taught us that every dick has to look this way. And so yeah. now if somebody has an uncut fetish, okay, well then now there you go. There's uncut dildos you can get now and everything like that. If you want your, you know, your hooded, you know, figure there to help you <laughs> where you're going. It, but it's it, but it's a shame, you know. All dicks matter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all dicks matter, damn it. And but unfortunately, you know, and that's a huge thing that I've had to work out, you know, you know, in in my relationship because you know my boyfriend is from Trinidad and Tobago. That's where his people, you know. They don't cut up nothing down there either. You know, it's a la natural. It is what it is. But, you know, he questioned a lot, really, how I felt about his dick being uncut. And I had to really, really convince him that I literally do not care because he's come up against so many people being turned off and put off by him because he has an uncut dick in, in the gay community. But gay, bitch, gay, gay boys can yeah. be bitches. You know, by a lot of things. Oh, your hair is right. We need fucking. Your nails not this right. We not fucking. Uh, we heard, heard about you down the street. We not. You know, all kinds of bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is a reflection of the insecurity that prevails in our community. You know, we. If somebody has a problem with you, the problem is really within them. It's not. There ain't nothing wrong with you. Yeah, I mean, I know, like, women who are, like, grossed out by uncircumcised dick. And I'm like, girl, once it's hard, you don't even know the difference. <laughs> like, it really doesn't, like, you really can't see a difference. I didn't know that was a thing in the straight world. Yeah, yeah, it it definitely is. And I think it's just because, like, we're so used to seeing circumcised dick that it's like when you see uncircumcised you're like is something wrong with that but once you're once you realize that it's literally the exact same thing just one has a flap of skin and one doesn't it really doesn't matter and like don't you want your partner to have the most pleasure that they can possibly have you know I don't know I don't I don't care so if any of you uncircumcised guys want to hit me up, let them go. <laughs> I know that's right. Her contact information will be in the show notes. <laughs> and, uh, shit. And then you're right. 90% of the time when they get hard, they look just like an uncut dick that's hard because that skin pulls back to the base yep. of the head. And if you put a hard uncut dick right next to a hard cut dick, you couldn't tell. Now, some of them are out of foreskin, and even once they're hard, it is a hood there. But at the end of the day, it still works the same. It's still dick. It's just one's like, like, it's like they're both red wines. One's a Cabernet, one's a Malbec. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one's a little, it has a little bit more character than the other. <laughs> but they both don't get you fucked up if you drink enough of it. And so... <laughs> Okay, so with that, my dear, we've had our delicious, uh, titillating conversation today. Oh, that was good, titillating, because titties. You did that on purpose? Yep, you caught that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we gave each other the air guns on that one, ladies and mm-hmm. gentlemen. Oh, so I'll let you have the last word. Tell the world. Oh, God. My audience, any fucking thing you would like to say about anything. Oh, my God. Guys, just keep fucking, but be safe about it. Be honest, communicate your needs, talk about your STI history, and have the best sex of your life. That's all. 
and hear your heal your childhood trauma. <laughs> Have great sex and heal your childhood trauma. Yes, great. That, that's all we need to know. Hey, that's good enough for me. Thank you so much mm-hmm. for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you all so much for taking time to listen to the Sex, Drugs, and Jesus podcast. It really means everything to me. Look, if you love the show, you can find more information and resources at sexdrugsandjesus.com or wherever you listen to your podcast. Feel free to reach out to me directly at Devannon at sexdrugsandjesus.com and on Twitter and Facebook as well. My name is Devannon, and it's been wonderful being your host today. And just remember that everything is going to be all right.